At UCT, we want to forge a new inclusive identity that reflects a more representative profile of students and staff, as well as the culture, heritage and epistemologies embodied by its diverse community. So broadly, we want to affirm the dignity, the contributions and experiences of all who work, study and interact with UCT, regardless of gender, socioeconomic status, health, ability, sexuality or race. We want to reflect the fullness of our social and African context in a way that is creative, inclusive, accessible, just and sustainable. We have to address the practices and views that we are experienced as exclusionary and that marginalize people. We will need to get to grips with the legacy and the continuation of colonialism and structural racism. While the focus of transformation builds on the best from the past, it also interrogates the assumption and the historical values of our ways of knowing, seeing and teaching. So we therefore begin to introduce alternative practices that advance social justice and contribute to sustainable development by harnessing the best ideas, people and systems. We're creating a new inclusive identity by reshaping the curriculum, by working to improve student performance and success and by pursuing employment equity targets and development programs. So we are currently reviewing the composition of all council and senate, and senate institution wide and departmental committees to make sure that these are representative of gender, race and where appropriate marginalised identities. Although our journey of transformation began in the 1980s, the events of the past two years have shown that we must accelerate the pace of transformation and reconsider our understanding thereof. So diversity and inclusivity drive transformation and are the cornerstones of the home for all identity that we want to create at UCT. We want to be intentional about this. As a result, we've spent two years drafting the new strategic plan having consulted all our stakeholders and having gathered views from diverse communities and disciplines. We are renaming facilities such as roads, buildings and classrooms to reflect the broader community of citizens and scholars who have helped to create UCT's changing identity. We've also audited and analysed the artworks and plaques on campus and the recommendations will be implemented by the University's Naming of Building Committee and the Works of Art Committee and of course by management. So the goal is to create a physical environment that reflects the diversity of culture, heritage and creative ideas that we have at UCT. There's a strong element of redress in creating diversity and inclusivity among staff and students. It affects our student recruitment and enrollment targets and our graduate output. So for example, we're admitting more students who experience socioeconomic disadvantage by making more financial and other resource support available to them. Where students need academic support, we're looking at placing them in supportive academic programs in ways that avoid stigmatization. For staff, we're creating growth and career progression opportunities for black and women staff in particular. And more recently, we saw the insourcing of about 1,300 previously contracted staff who are now fully fledged members of the university community. Discrimination has no place at UCT. But of course we do recognise that UCT is a microcosm of the broader South African society and so education is central to effecting change at the university. As such we're targeting students through awareness campaigns and some of the work for example is done through peer education programme. We also focus on curriculum change, institutional campaigns and research on gender-based violence, patriarchy, social justice, gender, sexuality, health, community engagement, 
stigma and substance abuse. We must strengthen the mental health services in student wellness and consider alternative healing modalities. The Mental Health Task Team has investigated the impact of mental health issues on student performance and throughput, and we will table a mental health policy in the near future. There are already a range of activities to pursue curriculum change, including around decolonization. And this is happening in various departments across the university. In addition, the Curriculum Change Working Group has embarked on a university-wide process to encourage discussion and to shape coherent responses to the student-initiated demand for decolonized education. Ultimately, we must ensure that our curricula does not perpetuate dominant cultural assumptions and epistemologies or reinforce existing social relations of power. Well, English may be the medium of instruction, but that doesn't exclude other languages in our daily discourse. So, for example, we're supplementing our traditional approach to language use in class. Also, some progress have been made by introducing glossaries of important concept and terms in vernacular languages, and mother tongue tutoring is an important mechanism to bridge the language gap.